Hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games and welcome to a brand new campaign on the channel. This is Crusader Kings 2, but some of you have probably already noticed that things do not quite look the same. Today we are go I'm going to be showing you, I should say, uh, I'm going to be showing you a overhaul mod for Crusader Kings 2 known as Pharaohs and Consoles. So what is this mod about? Well, I'm just going to read you what it says on the mod DB page. Crusader Kings 2 Pharaohs and Consoles is a total conversion mod in development for Crusader Kings 2 and its expansions. It is set in the mid 600s BC to the mid 400s AD. The scale of the mod is a total overhaul of Crusader, King to Crusader Kings 2 world map to the time of antiquity. The mod allows players to take control of well known historical figures such as Pharaoh. Uh, Samtik the First, Ashur Banipal, Cyrus the Great, Alexander the Third, and Gaius Julius Caesar. Many less well known figures from the times of antiquity, such as Ardes, the King of Lydia, Tespes Achmenid of Anshan, Prince Manasses of the House of David, and etc., are also fully playable and integrated into the world of pharaohs and consuls. The ancient world is carefully and accurately populated by the famous and infamous men and women known to us through the great histories of ancient empires and kingdoms. So as you can see here, there are several starting periods that we can go with. We are going to be going with the year 101 AUC. Uh, there is a note here. Uh, some, some of you may know that uh, one of the things that makes uh, converting CK2 to antiquity difficult is the BC to AD crossover. Well, they are going to be using the AUC um, calendar to make it possible to, uh, to, 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 to for the CK2 engine to support this, basically. Now, um, so right now, in the year 0 AUC equals 752 BC. This starting date is 101 AC equaling 653 BC. Let's read the intro. Necho I, the father of the newly crowned pharaoh, fell in battle while successfully staving off a Kushite invasion led by King Tantamani. Now his son has just reunited the twin kingdoms of Upper and Lower Egypt. Both father and son were installed as tributary kings by the mighty Assyrian Empire, but their Egyptian subjects long for independence and a return to past glories. For years there have been rumors that Assyria's grip is weakening. Perhaps this time you shall prove them right. Choose your role in these turbulent times and play as either a humble nobleman, prince, pharaoh, or king. So these are some of the suggested people to start as. Uh, we are going to be playing as a pharaoh. It's the name of the mod after all. And as you can see we have a brand new interface, a brand new map that uh, we are dealing with here compared to vanilla Crusader Kings 2. I'm going to walk you guys through it because maybe it will be confusing to you as to who is who, what is what. We'll go ahead and get started. We'll just jump right through here. I think I already went through everything here and um, we should be fine there and uh, load up Actually, I probably should just cut through this area here I also hope that the music is not too loud if anything I'm afraid it might be a little bit soft but it'll be fine as you can see it takes a little bit longer than usual to load the game up but it's not so bad although I might just do a cut here yeah we're just gonna do a cut and uh, we'll come back when it's done as soon as I said done and hit pause, it came right back. So, presenting Crusader Kings to Pharaohs and Consuls. In Pharaohs and Consuls, you will play as a king, emperor, pharaoh, or chief in the ancient world. Your goal is to secure as much land and prestige as possible for yourself, and when the time comes, your successors. You can see your portrait in the upper left-hand corner. Click the portrait to find out who your character is. Unless your dynasty dies out or you lose your last piece of land, the game will end in 1230 AUC, a.k.a. 476 AD. Uh, so then there's the rest of it, it's just the normal stuff. We are playing as an Egyptian Kemetic Pharaoh. The Egyptian culture gives us no special features. But the Egyptian system of governance is similar to monarchy. Rulers must rely on land holding vassals of varying loyalty and ambition. The maximum number of vassals and the number of holdings you can directly own are controlled by the centralization law. However, there is only one form of succession available. 
the chaotic open type, where the son with the most land inherits. If you should convert to a non-Egyptian religion, your government form will change to noble. We can hold fortified city, temple, fort, and hospital holdings without penalties. We can also hold tribal holdings without penalties for provinces with my culture. We can build fortified city, city, temple, fort, and hospital holdings, and Egyptian de dynasties may grow decadent if the religion also allows it. Law changes cost piety if the council is abolished. Matrilineal marriages are not allowed. We can revoke titles from tribal government vassals of another religion without objection from other vassals. We can revoke titles from minor kingdom tier vassals without objection from other vassals. There are no gender succession laws. Other vassals will not object to vassal retraction. We can move capital within the same lifetime every 600 months. Tribal government vassals are not included in our vassal limit calculation. And finally, we can't grant kingdom and empires to characters with a government from a different group. Uh, so basically, we were really similar to Muslims in the base game. The Egyptian religion was a complex system of polytheistic beliefs and rituals, which were an integral part of ancient Egyptian society. It centered on the Egyptians' interaction with many deities who were believed to be present in and, con and in control of the forces and elements of nature. The practices of Egyptian religion were efforts to provide for the gods and gain their favor. Formal religious practice centered on the pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Although human, the pharaoh was believed to be descended from the gods. As Kemetic in game, our high priest of Amun can grant divorces. The high priest of Amun can grant claims on titles. Priests can inherit titles. Priests can marry. The religion allows women to own temple holdings. Rulers can fight infidel neighbors for loot. Rulers can marry close kin to improve our vassal opinions. What's that divine marriage thing? Kemetic dynasties may grow decadent. Population of other religious groups must pay a religious tax, and Kemetic men can have up to four wives unless they are allowed to have concubines. All right, seven minutes in, and we finally actually can look at the map. And uh, so the terrain doesn't look great. This is the proper map itself. This is us down here, uh, Kemet. The uh, we are a tributary of the Assyrian Empire. Uh, so before we get more into the interface and things like that, let's go over uh, some of the various leaders that are around us. So for example, earlier there was a reference to King Ardes of Lydium. He was a part of the Mermaidi, Mermaidi dynasty, which is, uh, which is discussed by Herodotus in his famous book. Uh, this dynasty was eventually defeated by Cyrus the Great as the Persian Empire expanded west. Uh, the Greeks got involved in this fighting, and uh, this is what this was what really launches the chain of events that leads to the Greco-Persian uh, Wars. We have over here the El Ami under Temeritu II of Elam. Uh, these are basically early Iranians, um, sometimes called the Black Iranians. Uh, and they are, they are, they're probably also going to be in some conflicts with the Assyrian Empire. Uh, in fact, there is very little doubt of that. To our south, we have the Kingdom of Kush, which are essentially the, the Kushites, the Nubians, uh, who, uh, th this king here, Tanu Tamun, uh, as it was mentioned earlier, was responsible for the killing of, of Fast. By the way, I'm going to get my Egyptian very wrong. Get ready for that. Uh, Pasamtek, his father. Um, and, of, uh, and of course, we have to talk in detail about the head of the Assyrian Empire, Sar Sarani Assurbanipal of the Assyrian Empire. Now, um, Assurbanipal was the king of, at the time, the largest empire humanity had ever seen. This is centuries, uh, for example, before the Qin Empire. Um, uh, or sorry, the Qin, uh, the, you know, the first empire in China that was really established, obviously well before the Roman Empire, before the Persians, before the Babylonians, and uh, so many others. It's the largest empire the world had ever seen at the time. His Now his father here, Sar Saranan Esar Hadan, uh, was the one who actually conquered Egypt, which is what we are playing. Uh, Asur Banipol spent most of his rebellion fighting either the Alam or putting down lots and lots of internal rebellions, such as the Egyptians and others. Uh, but probably his most important work was his creation of the Royal Library. The Royal Library of Asur Banipal 
uh, held tens of thousands of tablets and texts uh, from the ancient world. He was a very intelligent and literate man. He was very interested in these sorts of things and would often ask for texts uh, as ransom from people that he was fighting. He um, eventually had, uh, I've seen different estimates, I've seen 30,000, 40,000, 45,000 ish. Uh, did I say 30,000? 30, 30,000, 40,000, 45,000. Those are the various estimates that I've seen as to how big this library was, but it is considered to be from multiple sources uh, that I've seen the first officially organized library in the history of the world. So very cool stuff. And, um, you know, I think his learning ought to be higher to attest to that. But, ten, you know, he's got terrific, domestic, amazing stats. But that's not who we're playing. We are playing as Pharaoh Pasamtek of Chemtech. And he is our suzerain. And the goal of this campaign, maybe I should have opened with that instead of a third of the way through the episode. But the goal of the campaign, this is going to be a very short one because I just want to introduce this mod to you guys. I want to see what you think about it. And then maybe we could do longer things later. Maybe I can play Egypt again later. Uh, but for right now, we just want to get dip our feet in. The goal will just be to break away from the Assyrian Empire and to push back the Kush from uh, their where, where they currently lie along our borders. That's pretty much it. So let's actually talk about who I am. I am Pharaoh Fasamtek of Kemet. Uh, I believe the fifth ruler of the 26th dynasty of Egypt. It kind of just depends on how you count things. Uh, this was the final homeborn Egyptian dynasty that ruled Egypt before the Persians would conquest it. Uh, they were not defeated by Cyrus the Great. It would actually be his son Cambyses uh, who, who would uh, defeat the the, the Egyptians. You can read about this in Herodotus' histories. Actually, one of the things I remember when I when I first time I read um, the histories, there was a really interesting anecdote he puts in here uh, about the conquest of Egypt, and he talks about how uh, after on the battlefield after a fight, you can tell the differences between the Persian skulls and the uh, Egyptian skulls because the Egyptian skulls tended to be hardened by the sun because they would shave more of their hair off. Uh, so like, you could sometimes get a rock and you could try to bash an Egyptian skull and it wouldn't break. As opposed to Persian skulls, they tended to be a bit softer because the Persians would um, grow their hair out and it was really common for, for young Persians to wear caps uh, and they would do so throughout much of their life so their, their heads were not baked by the sun and so it, uh, it allegedly made their skulls softer. Uh, interesting little things like that. Anyway, um, this dynasty ruled, uh, to, had a pretty good run uh, ruling uh, uh, Egypt, had, I think almost 150 years um, before they were, uh, they were defeated by uh, Cyrus the Great's son. Uh, now, as you can see, at the moment we are underneath the Assyrians, and historically the Egyptians were, uh, under the reign of this pharaoh, able to cast out the Assyrians. The key uh, the key to that was uh, forming an alliance with Lydia, so maybe we'll try to see if that's possible. Um, because the, uh, the Assyrians, of, of course, are much stronger than us right now. Let's see, uh, so right here their army levies are 4,800 and change, and we're at about an even 2,000. That's not counting all the suzerains and things like that. Uh, now, when the Assyrians would later collapse, uh, the Egyptians attempted to advance forward into this uh, Near East region to take back some land that they had previously held. However, they would end up being pushed back by Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians, uh, although the Babylonians were never able to conquer Egypt itself because, once again, the Egyptians enlisted the help of some Greeks, and so they were able to keep the Babylonians out of Egypt, and, and uh, so they would, uh, the dynasty would continue until later on when the uh, Persians, of course, conquer it. Uh, so I think with uh, all that having been said, was there anybody else I wanted to go over? I feel like there's an important character I am forgetting right now. Well, obviously they can't be that important if I didn't go into them. But as you can see, this is the map. Uh, it goes out into Ireland, Britannia, even Scotland. You can have bits of Scandinavia here, Iberia. Uh, it is a bit different. Obviously the coloring and formatting of the font and stuff would uh, take a little bit of getting used to. India does seem to be available. Although I'm using no other mods right now except for pharaohs and consoles. And uh, when I tried to use some other mods, just graphic mods, uh, it seems to just delete big chunks of uh, India as well as some other things. So we're going with no mods, we're just playing the game, we're just playing this mod, 
uh, in its purest form. All right, now we're just gonna go through the interface here real quick so uh, everybody can keep track of what's what. Over here is uh, your kingdom title. This shows when you were born, this is your age, your title's up here, it's very similar. This is basically the bigger interface mod, but just, just so you guys know, we are House Sati, we are Egyptian, Kingdom of Kemet. Um, we are, our suzerain is the Assyrian Empire, so we just click up here or here to get that. This shows our opinion of him. This shows uh, the various areas that we personally hold. So the number twos are provinces, the number threes are the equivalent of duchies, uh, number fours are equivalent to kingdoms, and then whenever you see a five, that is the, um, that's the, uh, the actual empire tier titles. So it's easy to keep track that way. Uh, what else here? Marriage, regular marriage. Here's the decadence game underneath your house name. This is where you can arrange marriages. There's your heir. You have your treasury here, bloodlines. We do have the bloodline of our grandfather, the noble blood of Saïs. Bloodline founded on the 10th of October, 10 AVC, AUC, excuse me, which is giving us a quarter of a point of monthly prestige and piety. Our Egyptian um, opinion goes up by five. Vassals are also less likely to join factions. Obviously very good for uh, quelling internal revolt. And uh, we are faster at gaining prosperity. Founded by nobility from the city of Saïs, Nico I and his son Patan... So Samtik the first after gaining control of Egypt in the 660s BC they are considered the 26th the dynasty of Egypt um, over here we are comedic Egyptian there's all the rules of it here's our stats so we're not great we have a seven diplomacy two martial seven stewardship four intrigue nine learning and a negative four to our combat skill we are a dutiful cleric we have pharaonic lineage. This is kind of similar to the Sayyid function of Muslims. This character is not necessarily a, a bloodline thing because uh, we are cl claiming patrilineal descent from the great unifier of Egypt, Farup Narmar, or from the sons of one of his daughters. So you see, it's it's just like with Muhammad, they're gonna kind of have it be something separate. Uh, we are proud, we are honest, we are slothful, and also envious. We also uh, have several areas here that we are the suzerain of. Uh, it's basically these areas here in the Sinai and Ashdod. Um, oh, I now I'm remembering who else I was going to look at. Yeah, yeah. Over here we have um, King Manasseh of Judea here. So he's 36 years old. He is of House David. There's his lion. Um, oh, yeah, actually, he's got his own bloodline here. Blood of David, founded in 40 AUC. Temple tax is increased, prestige is increased, temple vassal goes up, Abrahamic opinions up, just is up. Regarded as chosen by Yahweh in the eyes of many Israelites, the descendants of David are also considered the rightful rulers of the United Kingdom of Judah and Israel. Uh, this guy actually had a son who was named Ammon, who, uh, and uh, is supposedly a um, if you if you look at the uh, the genealogy of Jesus Christ when you look at the in the in the Bible in the New Testament at the Gospel of Matthew, um, uh, Manasseh Mana, Manasseh uh, here is um, supposed to be one of Jesus's descendants because he's descended from all the various kings of Judah. Uh, I don't know if he's had his yeah. Here's Ammon, and Ammon would also be another one who eventually leads to uh, Jesus. Um, this guy had uh, mostly good uh, relations with Assyria and things like that, but uh, we're actually not going to get too into him because I might I might do a game where I play as the uh, the Kingdom of Judah or something like that. Uh, there's also nice little different icons here, which is uh, which is pretty cool. So these are the direct vassals here. Uh, okay, was there anything else I wanted to go over? Grandparents, wards, children, parents. Yeah, this this all everything else here is pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything else to go over, so we can just actually start getting into things here. So, let's take a look at some of these uh, different mechanics and fun flavor events. For example, we can now go on a pilgrimage to the Tomb of Isis. Oh yeah, also you probably notice here in the top left, they've got little pictures uh, that show the societies and various things like that, so that's fun. Uh, we could join the Medje. They consider themselves the true protectors of the, or Magi, excuse me. They consider themselves the true protectors of the pharaohs and followers of the old ways, and will do anything to further the advance of Egypt and protect their fellow Egyptians, consisting of loyal warriors as well as competent spies, wielding manipulation and social skills as expertly as a dagger, they specialize in asymmetrical warfare, striking hard at the heart of their enemies. I actually don't think I'm going to join these guys. No, I will not. 
Okay, so let's go on a pilgrimage to Isis. It's going to cost me the, to the Great Temple of Isis. Soon you will humble yourself and travel in an entourage to visit the Great Temple of Isis near Pilak. All are equal in front of the gods. Uh, we need to record a, re, a recruit a court physician. Do that real quick. No valid candidates. Okay, that sucks. Uh, we can also choose to stop paying tribute here. We won't do that. We're just going to straight up go to a war. We have campfire story stuff here. We can borrow money from the Medjay Guard. Close a book. Borrow money from the Jews. We can tour our own lands. It costs me gold, but it'll help me lose decadence and gain piety. Increasing prosperity and things like that. We can expel the Jewry. Search for a smith. Do we have... Um, Okay. Oh yeah, other things. There's the Wikipedia link. We can go to the barber here. This is how it shows where we can lead armies. We have the great works. Obviously, we have the pyramids. These are giving us prestige. Same religious opinion bonus. Proud opinion. And the great sphinx increases our religious opinion even more. And the proud opinion even more. We have other things that uh, we could put in here like taverns, overseer of the rites, extra pyramids, etc. Uh, that might be something I look into doing later, but uh, for right now, it's... Um, it's not a thing. We do not have a treasury, so I might search for a smith. Here we have, of course, decadence, wealth, prestige, piety, domain size, vast limit, which we're over. Our realm size is included up there, which is kind of cool. And our personal score. Okay. Uh, plenty of minor titles here can be created. So you can see the du jour duchies and things like that. I think this is the way to... Oh, I kind of wish that this would highlight itself a little bit better. No, it's not highlighting it at all. Cut these guys some slack. You know, it's a fresh thing. Let's pick an ambition. Um, amass wealth, paragon of virtue. I think I might go for either exalted among men or paragon of virtue. I think for now, let's build a war chest. Okay. Uh, plenty of duchies can be made here. This is our capital. Is that what I want to be my capital though? I think I want it to be a uh, Rakotis here. Oh no, here's what I want. Anktawi. Unless there's something else that has more holdings. We could revoke his title. But we do not have the 50 prestige needed, and there is no allowing of revocation law. Hmm. It will cost me a hundred piety to do that. Okay. Well, good thing we're going to do a pilgrimage. We're over our vassal limit at the moment. We can fix that in a little bit. I think we're going to go for a business focus for right now. Hmm. Okay, we're doing our crown focus. One of my kids does not have a focus. Let's have her do etiquette. Yeah, I don't want to extort my subjects. How much would it cost me to create all these titles? 197 each. Okay, so I cannot afford it right now. Could we maybe go to war with Kush, though? Because, if we look at our Declare War goal, first off, I can go to war with uh, the Assyrians at any time, by the way. So you just Declare War, go for the free tributary, and we're off to the races. Um, but down here... We could do an invasion... Which I think would be like, uh, oh no, no, no. Oh, I would just take everything anyway within the kingdom of Kush. Thing is, du jour, is that the same as, oh no, yeah, I could do that. I could take, maybe, like this piece of wadi here, Darfur. Darfur might not come along. Oh, I thought that was part of it. Hmm. Yeah, so so du jour actually Kush owns this area. I think that's the only difference though. Okay. 
We might do this invasion. Strengthen us up for a fight against Assyria. Hmm. Got an awful lot of vassals, city leaders, and things like that. Um. Have the Sepat of Rykoas. Okay. I need 50 prestige and revocation law. And I can't do revocation law. I don't have piety, so I need piety before anything else. I could create a small retinue if I wanted. Very small, it's only 636. Also notice how there's no plus and minuses here. We actually once again have tiny little pictures. So I think what the plan is going to be here is we're going to invade Kush, take all of that. Hopefully we're going to be stronger and uh, yeah, I think we're actually not even going to unpause. Oh yeah, let's unpause at least. I'm preparing myself for my... Let's uh, let's say... Let, this way I can say I unpause the game before I ended uh, the first episode. I'm preparing myself for my travel to the Great Temple of Isis, and I have undergone... Understood that there are members of my court that have not yet gone on pilgrimage to the temple. As Pharaoh, it is my duty to care for my people, and I will bring one of them with me. Okay, it will, bring, it will make travel more enjoyable. Just 5 gold, 5.6. I'll take it. Okay. Great. It will be a little interesting to see what they end up doing. They actually have a strong claim on my kingdom, uh, which is a bit of a problem even after I break away from them. But uh, they could still try to come after me. I am now fully prepared for my journey to the Great Temple of Isis. There will be a Regent ruling Kemet while I am away. Now on pilgrimage. Okay. God's wife of Amun Ipetsut. She has Naptian blood. What is this? Founded by King Alara, Kashta's father of the 25th dynasty in the 800s BC, this is the line of. Oh, right. This is the line of Nubian Kushite nobility who once ruled all over over all of Egypt and Kush. That's why there was that fight with the the, the two kings, with the Kush king and the Egyptian pharaoh. It was part of the overthrow. Interesting, gives more prestige, another quarter point of prestige, Kushite opinions up, Nubian opinions up, Kushitic opinion is up, enables an added cognatic succession. That is very interesting, if we can get off of the open. And legitimizing bastards is free. Interesting. So she's my teacher? Okay, this woman has 15 learning. Alright, we'll go for it. We're gonna give her a bit of our blood. Doesn't look like we became infected, which is nice. Egyptian opinions plus ten. Wow. So who is she married to? Hmm. God's white of a moon. If it toots. Nearby, you see a group of tribesmen have encircled a group of fellow Egyptians. It is very, is very likely they will rob and kill them. You jump in, I might get wounded, and this person will like me more. Let's rescue them. Okay. I don't know what the Assyrians are going to get up to. I'll have to just wait and see. Okay, but uh, all right, there. As I said, uh, I did manage to unpause before the end of the episode. I know that it was a lot to go over, and it is a uh, it is a jump into the deep water of a completely new. Uh, as far as I can tell, there's is not really well known uh, total conversion mod for Crusader Kings two. Wait, whole cycle through this event. As you stop for camp one evening, you notice that an old man in poor clothing has made camp at the same place. The man offers to pray to the gods alongside you if you can spare him some bread. Allow the old man to join your entourage in prayer. Don't need any more people joining us. But we'll allow it. Just costs a little gold. Your entourage raises their faces to the heavens and begin to pray to o Horus, Ra, Osiris, and Isis. Oh, mighty gods, hear us. Oh, mighty Ra, let your gaze fall upon us. I raise my eyes to the heavens and whisper a silent prayer to Isis. 
no longer slothful. Cool. Okay, but that'll that'll be it for today. Uh, as I said, we're just dipping our toes in. Please, please, please let me know how you feel about this uh, mod. If you love it, if you hate it, are you intrigued by it? What do you want to see me do in it? And things like that. Uh, I really would appreciate it. Or if you don't like it, tell me why you don't. Although, if you don't like it, you probably didn't make it this far. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining me. I'm Conquering History Games, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Goodbye.